Hello everybody, this is Jen from The Hungry JPEG. What I want to do in this video is I want to show you how to use the text button and the options that come up underneath of it when you left press with your mouse button and you long hold on it. So right now I am pushing and I am still holding and it brings up this option menu. Again, I am still holding and then you have all of these to select from. Okay, I am using Shortcuts a lot for this is also available in Shortcuts a lot three and four pro. Um, in Shortcuts a lot two or Scale two, you will not have the full glyph panel. The font that I want to use or I'm going to use in this video is Kaimochi. When you try to bring this up in Shortcuts a lot two, none of these extra characters come up. So what you will need to do if you want to use a font like this or any of the PUA coded fonts, the private use area fonts, you will need to buy the upgrade, which is only like 20 bucks over at Craft Edge. But that's the only way around it. There isn't anything that any of the font designers can do about it. It's just something that lies within the programming and Craft Edge is no longer able to alter that programming. So you will need to um, do that little upgrade, okay? All right, let's get rocking. The first option is the regular typing, okay? So let's get going here. All right, so here's how it comes up. Okay, you just typed it out using your keyboard. You can adjust everything in here. And it looks so pretty. You see these little lines though? Okay, like when I pull on it here, you see those little lines? Let me let me click preview for you here. Those if you go to use this um file as a cut file, you will want to get rid of those, okay? And the easiest way to do that is to come up here to Path and click Union. Anytime that you stack letters together, you will want to do that. And what that does is that eliminates all of the little attachment lines, okay? All right, let's undo that. Okay, and like the tracking, all of this is available over here on the right panel. And people sometimes will try to separate the letters and move them. You don't need to do that. You just use this little panel right here and it does it all for you. Okay? All right. So let's delete this and move on to our next option here. The vertical type tool. That types your letters in a straight up and down line. Hello. Well, that's too far apart. So what am I going to do? Again, come on over here and decrease them okay if it looks like it's getting too close and you do need to separate them if you notice see how it highlights when i click on it they're all grouped together so you come up here to object and you click on group and you can individually move your letters to wherever you need them to be okay you can either move it like this using your keyboard your mouse or, let me show you, let me get it up here. Let's say you need to just nudge it. Come over here to these two black arrows and these nudge buttons are right here. And you just push your left mouse key and that nudges it up. Then you highlight the entire thing again. Come back up to object and hit group and that groups it together. If you want to remove the lines because you want it all cut together, you come up to path and you click union. Okay? All right, so let's go and delete that. Press and long hold again. Type on path tool. I'm going to bring up two shapes for you here. We're going to get this heart and we're going to get this heart. Because there's two things I need to show you. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's separate them and enlarge them. Okay. Separate them a little bit more. Okay, the type on path tool needs a path in order for it to work. If I click over here, see what comes up? It won't let you do it. When you click in here, I want this word to sit right here. Well, that's not going to work either. 
Well, why not? What am I doing wrong? Well, because when you go to type, it is going to select in the program where that word is going to be or where it's going to start. So, in order for you to put it where you want, go ahead and type in what you want. Bring your cursor back behind it. Let me see. There we go. And then hit your space bar. So, space that around there. Okay, so this one has the word on the inside. Well, I don't want it on the inside. I want it on the outside. Well, I can't do that. It won't let me. Let me try this heart. Okay, again, it starts in the same spot. Let's try it. Well, what do you know? Let me back my cursor up here, and let me space bar it. Oh, look, there it goes. So right there. That's how you do it. You need to use the space bar. That is very important. I have a lot of people come and ask me, Jen, I cannot get it up here. What am I doing wrong? The space bar. That will take it all the way around. And then when you get to your starting point, it just all bunches up. Okay? So make sure that you use that space bar to put it where you want it. And if it's stuck on the inside, Find the other shape because it'll put it on the outside for you, okay? There is no way to change where the initial position is. It will always start in the same spot. You just use that space bar to position it where you want it, okay? All right, let's get rid of those. And the final one is a fun one. I use this one a lot. Type on arch. Okay. Oops, I got to select this. Okay. So now I've just increased that tracking so that you can read it. All right. So this is how you go about doing something like this. All right. And you can decrease that arch by changing this number up here the arch radius or you can make it even greater you can get it into a circle okay and then you can also change it and it'll go the other way oops disappeared on us okay so that's how you go about using the type on the arch and I really really love this one it's one I use a lot okay all right, guys, that is how you go about using this text tool. Now, I want to show you one other thing. How to replace fonts when we have such a pretty font like this and we have the extras. We're going to switch and do the type tool. <clears throat> trying to... Oh. Okay. So we have this. Well, maybe I want to replace a few of those letters with maybe a little bit of a fancier letter. Okay. You see we have some pretty cool looking ones down here. Let's see. Okay. This S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to highlight the S. Then I'm going to come on over and I'm going to click it. And that replaces it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to highlight the Y. Let's find a really pretty Y. Let's make it the same. Okay. Do we have a pretty capital H, a different H, or is it all the same? Let's see. Nope, it looks like it's the... Okay, so that's fine. But that's how you replace them. Now I want to show you something. If you have it like this, okay, and you want to, well, you can't highlight on it to replace it. Well, what do I, what have I done? I can't select it. Well, it's because you have to be in the text feature, okay? 
you have to be in that part of it to allow it to be changed. Okay, if you've come up here and you've already done grouped it or you've done a union on it, it is not going to work like that. Okay, you still have to be in the text part of it and you cannot have changed anything about it except for switching out the letters. All right, so there we go, folks. If you have any questions on how to do any part of this, just send us a line at hello at thehungryjpeg.com. You guys have a great day.